Hello, everybody. Uh, Michael DeBang here with my lovely wife, Andrea, back there. Hello. So um, we are busy being quarantined. Andrea hasn't left the studio the whole time. That's right. Yeah. And I haven't left my studio other than do this, and we, we have six feet apart from us right this second. That's right, we so, do. Yeah. So, um, so as some of you know, um, last week we did a video helping our buddies out at Chroma Paints in Vancouver, because obviously their storefront shut down, but they're still making inexpensive, affordable paints. So we want to help our buddies out at, at Chroma. And so one of the things that... Um, we have been doing is showing like even though they may not have all the paints that everybody has um there are really really easy ways to actually make it on your own and andrea being the master mixer she's the mix master as you might say uh, she's going to be doing some stuff today and um andrea what are we going to be doing today Today, uh, we are going to be making uh, the equivalent of transparent brown iron oxide and Van Dyke brown hue, which is uh, one of our favorite, some of our favorite colors for super fast um, antiquing and distressing. All right, cool. So let's zoom in and see what she's got cooking. Okay, so these are the colors that we're trying to match. Um, so these are the golden colors. And uh, we, uh, both Michael and I, use these pretty extensively in our work. So like this is a, a little dolly head that um, Michael used those colors on. And then here are some of my pendants in progress at various stages of completion. And you can see areas like this is all um, the Van Dyke brown right now until it gets its other layers of paint. So I'm going to pop these over here. So I've already laid them out on my palette just to save a little bit of time. But in order to really see um, what those colors are looking like, and these are, uh, by the way, these are the three chroma colors that we're going to be using to mix these. Um, we're going to be using transparent red iron oxide and carbon black. These are sort of our key, key ingredients. You can get really, really close if you only have these two, but that really pushes it to like a perfect match is if you put in just a tiny little bit of this nickel azo yellow as well. So I'm just going to move these out of my way for the moment. Um, so these are what the colors look like just as a big blob, but we have to sort of push them into this nice um, kind of a thinned out version to see what the undertone of the color is. So that's our transparent brown iron oxide from Golden. Here is our Van Dyke brown, that nice, deep, deep, rich brown, very, very grungy all on its own. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our chroma colors and uh, I'm going to start off by mixing the lighter color first because once I have this, it's really, really easy to get to the Van Dyke Brown. So you'll notice that this transparent red iron oxide is not too, too far off a uh, transparent brown iron oxide. Those names start to become tongue twisters after a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to sort of get the, the right tone. And this is that carbon black, and you need just so little to start with. Carbon black has a crazy high tinting strength. So you really don't need very much of it when you're creating mixes. So you'll see, you saw how little I used right there. And I think you'll see that I'm actually like just... I think I'm really just about there. And then this is where, I'm just gonna clean off my palette knife here. Um, I'm just gonna take just a tiny, tiny little bit. Ooh, maybe I'm gonna take a little bit, there we go, of this yellow. And that's just gonna warm it up so that it has the same sort of underglow that that color has right over there. So just taking it like this. And I feel like I'm probably pretty close right there. Yep. So at this point, I'm going to test it out over here. This is this nice textured board that Michael prepared for us. This is, um, his work is so sculptural that um, he really has a lot of texture. And um, so his, his stuff shows up best on these texture boards. So I'm going to start off with this transparent brown iron oxide, which we just call TBIO for short. Um, this is the version from Golden, and then I'm going to water it way out over here, just like that. 
And then we're gonna compare, see how we did with our chroma mix. So this is the method that I typically use is by adding water. Andrea does uses this method a little bit less, but <laughs> like hardly at all. <laughs> yeah. So I do the water stuff. Yep. So this is the um, version right here. So this is the this up. is the using the chroma mix that you just added on. That's right. And you're thinning it out. And I'm thinning it out with the old water. That's right. And then once you see it sort of side by side like this, I, um, you know, I could make it a tiny little bit darker. I feel like, you know, just like a hint more of um, the transparent red iron oxide and it would be like 100%. But honestly, this is really, really close. This is also fantastic. Um, once you've got this mixed up, it's a great way to add like a kind of a sepia glaze or tone over collage or um, old you know, old cabinet card, stuff like that. So now let's go back over here. Just clean off my palette knife real quick. And what we want to do now is to make this um, Van Dyke brown. And so if you notice, like this is a really, really dark color. So what we're gonna need is more black for this. And so here's that color that I mixed up and I'm just gonna make a, a little bit more of it. So we've got our transparent red iron oxide that had just that tiniest bit of um, yellow in it, Nicolazzo yellow. And now I'm gonna take about that much black to start off with. And you'll see that the black really is just so, so strong. Maybe I overdid it with the black. I grabbed a big, bunch of it and I got too dark. So now I'm gonna have to go. I hate doing this. So if you have extra, um, Michael has a good tip for storing your extra paint. Yeah, so one of the things like uh, that uh, they taught me in art school was if you just take like um, like little Dixie cups or actually plastic cups and um, then you have like a, a container that you can, they all sit in and you close up the container so that anything that you mix, you don't have to close up each individual thing. Anything you mix, you just put it in the plastic container and they're not gonna go bad. You gotta make sure it's an airtight container though. All right, so okay, let's we see. I think, we're, I think we're getting yeah, there. It's looking good, yeah. I think so. Oh yeah, that's right on there. Yep, I think so. Yep. Um, so there you go. So to me, um, and again, it might be really hard for you guys to tell on camera, this is a tiny, tiny bit redder. Yeah. So I would just take um, some more of this yellow right now. That's that Nicolazzo yellow. Um, not a lot of it, um, small stages. And then that'll just kind of make it so that I'm getting exactly that same tone. Um, if you're that picky, like if you're using it the way that uh, Michael is, where you're literally just kind of using it as a, as a wash, uh, um, see, that's, that's right on there. That's right on. Yeah, yeah that's right on. I think yep. it is. Yep. So should we test it out on the board real yep. quick? let's do it. All right. So uh, clean out my brush. So this is Golden's Van Dyke Brown Hue right here. And then Ella de Mang with the water. This is like really, really packed with pigment, that carbon black in there. Okay, and then let's take our chroma mix. And some water. Yep, looks and there we go. Darn good. All right, so remember this was the pre-made stuff. Right. This is the chroma. Andrea recipe. So yeah. Yep. Pretty awesome. Um, so one last thing I would say is once you figure out what your recipe is, like you've got your ratios figured out, um, it's not a bad idea to kind of just draw circles. I do this usually on my palette when I'm not using palette paper. So it might be like this would be like the transparent red iron oxide that much to like this much of the carbon black, for example, and then like this much of the nickel azo yellow. And then then I know that that's my formula. So, wow, that's so sciencey. I know, because I'm such a geek. <laughs> so thanks for joining us in my very messy studio. 
Yes, and I'll say goodbye from my hand. Hello, <laughs> goodbye, bye. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And you guys can uh, you guys can uh, check out Chroma. And um, what's the website, Andrea? I, chromacrylics.com, I, I believe. It's chromacrylics.com. Yeah. Chromacrylics. But we'll make sure to add um, a link to the video. And if you guys have any other questions or comments, feel free to add them to the video. And um, if we can, we'll try to answer your questions in our next video. Okay. Bye. Bye.